As conversations build on the next general elections and a ruling party rated poorly in key governance standards, we look at the opposition parties. Are they truly ready? Away from politics, the African Cup of Nation has begun, but not without controversy. While it's caught joins to discuss fears of poorly rated football competition. And as always, we will be going through the major newspapers and having a review of today's biggest stories. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. I am Saogi Ogbonwa. And I am Messi Boku. It's good to have you join us this beautiful Friday morning. Absolutely. Uh, as always, we will start with top trending stories, but much later we're going to be having a you know discussion on the opposition parties across Nigeria. You know, some of the things that I've, I've read across social media and seen people say or, and ask is, you know, are these opposition parties simply waiting and asking that Nigerians simply hand their votes over to them without any doing any work, without you know fighting, without working hard and tireless to ensure that um, you know they convince Nigerians that they are a better option and so we're gonna be asking those questions this morning have they done well enough are they doing well enough in, in the period to convince Nigerians that they are a better option come 2023 and of course uh, Afcon uh, with our discussions with uh, Wally Scott will also come up this morning we'll be looking through the officiating and a few embarrassing or seemingly embarrassing moments at the Africa Cup of Nations but before that our top trending stories. Let's start with, of course, one of the well, the major opposition party, uh, the PDP. Chief Dele Momodu, the owner of Ovation International Magazines, uh, has declared his intention to also run for president come 2023. And of course, he's running under the platform of the, the People's Democratic Party. Uh, this, of course, uh, you know, might come as a shock to some people, but for others, you know, they might seem very indifferent, and uh, mostly because. Um, you know, he, he as a as a you know Nigerian has the right to contest, and everybody does. Uh, but he doesn't have a you know a lot of experience with regards governance. He has not you know be, you know held any government position, um, in particular in the past. Uh, he has, of course, you know hung around a lot of politicians. He has uh, he has a lot of friends you know in the political space. Um, you know, but at the same time, you know the chances, and this is one of the things I've also seen mentioned: the chances of the PDP giving him the ticket, you know, are close to zero. Well, so, um, I, like you rightly mentioned, the fact that uh, everyone has a right to contest, I mean, including, but, I mean, we can also declare our intention saying we want to contest under any party. However, uh, he, I listened to him and he talked about not having that experience, but he has talked about the fact that he's been economically viable. And if you talk about business and what have you, he has been very strong. He, he, he also mentioned the fact that he thinks it's a plus for him that he's not actually had any political office. For instance, let's say he's not, uh, whether by appointment or by election, yeah. he's not been a commissioner, a councillor, chairman, and what have you. So he, he was saying that that's on a plus for him because I, I really don't know why he thinks that that's a plus for him. But he's mentioned the fact that being an economic or uh, being in business, uh, it's a plus. And he understands the, the plights of Nigerians. He understands the pains. He also went on to highlight some of the gains he has achieved in entertainment. The fact that if you see right now, you know, young people, artists in Nigeria, both male and female, are, are, are topping the chart. And he has contributed to all of that. And, uh, well, but like you rightly mentioned, because you want to begin to look at the experience. Do you have the experience? That's number one. Do you understand the pain? And he said one of the major issues, because... Uh, he mentioned one of the major issues as being disunity for us as a country, uh, that is the uniting factor. Uh, mentioning the fact that he's also from the southeast, uh, I mean southwest. Southwest. Uh, and he also has some kind of affiliation with the southeast and what have you. But uh, let's see how it goes, because mm. at the end of the day, the People's Democratic Party would have to look for a very viable candidate to push <coughs> out there uh, if they Absolutely. have to clinch to the seat of the 2020. And, um, because of how critical, you know, it is for the opposition parties and in every other party, mostly the PDP, um, and their chances of winning the elections in 2023. I remember they, they, they did all they possibly could in 2019, I believe. Um, maybe, you know, they can assess some of the mistakes that they made. Maybe they can also review some, you know, the decisions that they took, uh, the persons that they put, you know, um, as their front runners, you know, which a lot of people have looked at and, and said, okay, th these are very, very 
you know, reasonably good candidates. Um, but in 2023, PDP has a you know huge task ahead of it. You know, to not just you know, um, you know find the right candidate, but also convince Nigerians that these are the persons that will be able to move the country to a better place. I, I don't want to say next level, um, to a better place. You know, generally. And so, because of how critical that decision is, um, not just anybody can ju can't just be anybody. Um, who has a popular, or seemingly popular face, or be, you know, decides that they, they, you know, they're a member of the PDP and they want to run for president, um, and that's why it might be a fast strike for Dilema Momodo, Chief Dilema Momodo. It, 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 like I said, the chances of him getting this get up really, really, really slim um, because of how critical that decision is for the PDP. On any, any other party, he maybe would stand a chance, but he has um, a few months ago joined the PDP or you know gone back to the PDP. I also don't think it's the first time he's running for president. Yeah, it's 2011. Um, he actually yeah. contested. So he has, you know, just a few months ago, gone back to the PDP. And so I, I'm not sure if he's aware that his chances of, you know, getting that ticket are extremely, extremely slim. And so it starts to look like, you know, it's it's a joke to some people. Exactly. Now, if you if you want to look at it and if you feel that the PDP should be, you know, thinking in that particular direction, you see one strong thing, an argument is still on. It feels like a lot of people are trying to just ignore. It's the fact that if you say rotation has been it despite the fact that it's not been constitutionally guaranteed then uh, everyone should be thinking political parties at this point in time should be thinking of which zone should have taken it yeah. and should pay attention to it so let's assume that uh, you know these political parties put their acts right and then they pay attention to the fact that the south east should be considered following all of the crisis i mean all of the unrest in the southeastern region i pop and people asking for a referendum and uh, wanting to go different paths so um, one would think that the pdp should be considering that that should be number one and if they are able to zone then of course you also have people who are from different regions of you know the country also part of members of the political party like Dele Mamoud. and then you would think that that would also be uh, you know a factor because before you win elections and numbers it's not just about having a fine mm -hmm. face or having so much money and what have you 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 need to do you need to work with numbers and so if what? you have people from different region then it's possible that you are able to begin to uh, canvas and push this candidate but most importantly, because people, I mean, it, it feels like um, you see the declaration. A lot has been talked about now. You see the uh, candidates that uh, highlight has been on, if you want to put the, use that particular word. And it feels like nothing has been really talked about the South East. Or, or well, those who have not, actually come not, out to, those who have actually come yeah. out to declare their intention, don't seem to be having that highlight. Don't seem to be having all of the attention well, well, uh, that their counterparts know, are having from different well, regions. So, so we can quickly move on. You know, I, th I think it's, it, that's the PDP's decision, not the Limo Modus decision. The, it's the PDP. No, no, no. I'm just as saying a, that. I'm, I'm just saying that as a party, mm -hmm. that if they think that they have to get it right, then they, they need to begin to consider some of these issues that yeah, putting the parties apart. And, and to be honest, nobody knows what the PDP is thinking. You have also seen analysts say that you know the people who jump in first and declare their intention first you know, eventually get keep you know pushed aside you know a few months to the elections you know and uh, you know these are some of the names that will eventually very likely be you know forgotten in a few months that they're even running um so so the pdp still has a lot of calculations you know to make and same with every other political party have a lot of calculations to make leading uh, to the elections uh, we're just in january 2022 and i understand that one whole year of politicking you know is what we're going to experience but it's still it's still it's still reasonably um uh, too Fair. early yeah exactly to to conclude that that's what their decision would be the south is still will have a chance um, and have a shot Moving away from the PDP and, of course, uh, Chief uh, Dele Momodu, let's uh, move to Anambra State, where something pretty interesting happened yesterday. Uh, the uh, governor of the state, uh, uh, governor-elect of the state, Chikuma Soludo, former CBN governor, um, set up a transition team that will, of course, uh, lead him into government. Uh, government um, um, when um, Willie Obiano's uh, term expires. Um, this transition team has been praised, and if you look across the comments that I um, I read, a lot of people commended uh, uh, Chukuma Soludo uh, because of the people who made the team. There's criticism with regards to the number because there's 80 of them in this transition team, um, and there's I saw also saw people comment and say that this is you know quite a, a large number of people for a transition uh, committee, but. If you look at the quality of persons that made up the team, that basically you know, made everybody relax and say, okay, well, this looks like a very, very capable team. A couple of them, they are not even from Anambra State. You know, so he wasn't even looking you know, at um, you know, state of origin when making you know, that transition committee. He was looking at competence. He was looking at the quality of the individuals that will lead him into uh, um, government. Um, and that's one of the things. Some of the people that were mentioned 
that have been named let's see if i can quickly find that list um just a few of them you know that really really caught my attention mrs obi ezekwesili who's a chairperson of the transition team uh, professor, professor benedict oke orama uh right honorable um ucho kafo professor patu tomi professor chidi odinkalu mr steve Wonga, chief osita um chidoka and um honorable dr ben wanko that's just eight of them that i'll quickly mention um along with you know a couple others that were well are phenomenal persons in governance in economics in whatever field that they are um technocrats you know as you if you could, if you want to call them that um so this basically got a lot of people excited about what an umbra will look like when chukuma Soludo eventually takes over office Mm. Well, um, those persons that uh, some people are saying that, yeah, this is an opportunity, the importance of having a technocrat in the system, you, you're the list of persons uh, that constitute the transitional team, uh, look like the persons that would add value, for instance, OB is a uh, some persons are quite impressed at the fact that should be leading the team. And we're yeah. hoping that uh, uh, Anambra would actually turn to what uh, the governor actually thinks it will become. But like you, we would always say, maybe too early, you begin to wait to see, you know, what the plan is. Some people would say speaking English is not uh, a criteria that it would translate into development and what have you. So at the end of the day, let's see how. Yeah, it looks really great. It looks great because we've seen, even when this administration came on board, you want to talk about the economic team of the president. I mean, look at those who constituted and you say, oh, you know, some brilliant heads right there and what have you, but well, where are we right now? And so. Uh, as much as it's commendable to say, yes, that's a, a step in the right direction, uh, you have, uh, you know, quite some uh, yeah. amazing, fantastic personality in there with wow. some qualities and experience. And we're hoping that that would, uh, you know, affect and bring about change and development in terms of these ideas. Another thing also, again, is <coughs> implementation, because usually that's always the, the, the problem that we have. So you have a very wonderful policy. Uh, you have very brilliant. And at the, uh, the point of executing, well, where, where do we stop? So, uh, but it's a good well, one. Kudos to them, and uh, let's so see my, how it comes my out. thoughts on this. Um, when the, uh, this current administration came into power in 2015, um, and this is in response to one thing you mentioned, follow up to what you mentioned, um, they were first of all criticized because the government took about six months before he set up his, you know, before he was able to name ministers and the likes. Um, pe people in government defended and say it doesn't matter how long it takes, you know, <laughs> as long as they eventually name. Okay. Um, and then eventually named these persons and they were basically political cronies. They weren't necessarily people who were experienced in any of those fields. They were people, they were basically round pe uh, pegs in square holes. But, you know, anybody who seemingly assisted in getting the government into power was thrown in, you know, and given some position. And that's why you see a lot of, you know, MDAs in the country didn't work. Um, if you ask 80% of Nigerians who's the minister for this or that, I'm sure a lot of people do not know. Because these persons are almost relevant in those fields that they were, they were um, given. So there is that. Um, and so that's so, so it's a plus, you know, that you can see Chukma Soludo and the, the mindset and the kind of people that he wants to surround himself with. I understand implementation is different from, you know, sharing ideas. Mm. Um, but there is that. The Anambra people are excited because of the caliber of person that Chukma Soludo is. Um, his background as a CBN governor and what, you know, it promises, you know, for Anambra state. Um, and so himself and then having a, you know, team like this, these aren't necessarily, you know, uh, going to be people working for him in government, it's a transition team. Um, but at least it, it, it gives you an idea of the caliber of minds that he wants to surround himself with while getting into, um, into that position. Um, another thing that I would uh, mention is um, we also need to realize, and, and this, okay, some other thing, two things I'll mention. First of all is, you know, shedding light on the fact that the, we need to see some of these persons show their hands at the state level. Some of them have contested for president before or have tried to get into, you know, the, the seat as high as the presidency before, and they failed. So people have mentioned that it's also good that we see how capable they are at the state level. Um, you know, and that's, you know, one of the pluses that Chukuma Sudo has compared to Kingsley Mogalu um, in conversations concerning elections in the last, you know, few years. Let's see what you can do at the state level first. Um, that's another thing. The third one that I'll mention is governance at the state level is extremely important um, for every citizen, for the electorate. If we have states run by persons who know what they're doing, who can develop IGR, who can give them the very basic, you know, things that make, you know, better quality of life, nobody necessarily would need to remember about the federal level all the time. State governments and their failures have also contributed to 
um, the, you know, the complaints that Nigerians have had at the, at the federal level. If you have a state working perfectly with infrastructure, healthcare, job uh, creation, and every security-wise, a lot of people will leave very, very comfortably. And if you have that happening in every state across the country, then a lot of times the pressure that the federal government also and the insults that the federal government gets all the time will be less. So we need to remember how critical it is that we have people in government house in this, at the state level that know what they are doing basically. And so, best of luck to a number of people. We hope that Chikuma um, Soludo does succeed, and of course, uh, with the rest of his team. Our final uh, story on Top Trending this morning is the EFCC uh, sharing uh, that they have made an arrest of a fake army general. He, of course, uh, tried to defraud citizens of uh, $270 million, but he was eventually arrested along with uh, some uh, arms and ammunition. But that's not the only thing with regards to this story. His name or is uh, Bolarinwa Olua Shegun. Faked, you know, himself as an army general. Also even said that the president, uh, Mohamed Buhari, had uh, stated that he was going to make him the next uh, chief of army staff. This is a very clear story of, uh, you know, since we passed me, I want to do now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the only thing concerning this story. People have also seen that this person is the same person. If you remember during the NSAS protest, he was the same person who was firing into a crowd. He got out of his uh, black SUV, a Range Rover, and was firing into a crowd of NSAS protesters somewhere here in Lagos. The young man, Kwelumi uh, Onifade, who made that recording, if you remember the story very well, who made the recording of that incident where this this human being you're seeing on your screen was firing into a crowd of protesters, live ammunition. Um, the person who made that video eventually was found dead, um, was arrested, a country report, arrested by the police and never made it out alive. And that's an investigation that we still, you know, have not been able to get to the, the, the bottom of till today. Um, but, so rest in peace, Balumi Onufade, but this person on screen that is not the chief of army staff, neither is he an army general, um, has been so, arrested. So, so how did he? So I like to start. I like to start from the part that if uh, the story, that's something to go by, that he was found shooting in the crowd during the answers uh, protest. How did he find himself there? How was he able to, you know, deceive everyone and come? I mean, really, it doesn't really add up. It doesn't really make sense. Except there's something that we don't know. Except there's a play. There's a game that's actually about to unfold, and somebody's going to take a fall for something. Because how do you, the, the military is, is not just any profession. The Nigerian. And that's why I said. Know, so know, how, this, do you, how do you say that somebody parades himself as the as chief, an army general? An army general. I mean, that's a lot to even, you know, digest right yeah, now. That's why I said, you know, this is a clear case of now the things way past my own, they do now. Because there are things now that you should try. Listen, there are things that you should do, or you know, no, no, you shouldn't. No, you should do. There are things that you can do, and people will say, ah, this one is just a criminal. But for so, you so, to, but how did he break bridge the protocol? How how was he able to carry himself so much that he couldn't be recognized? And that you know, the real the, the real army generals, the uh, the military personnel. So I don't think was, not he, he, I don't think he was necessarily walking in army circles. You know, this is if so a, he was working in stand. isolation. No, so listen, so these pictures, you know, you're seeing aren't necessarily in, you know, 82 division or any division. Um, these pictures could have been taken in his own house, you know, taken anywhere. Um, you know, maybe, of course, around unsuspecting, you know, fellow, you know, uh, military officers. Um, you know, but I, I don't think he, he, you know, would walk into, you know, where the chief of army staff is and salute him and say, you know, good afternoon, San Francisco and so please, because they would find out that, you know, nobody knows this person. Um, I remember also a couple of years ago, decades ago, actually, a person who, um, you know, said that he was CBN governor or so and tried to sell an airport. One of the biggest scams in the world for more than 200, about almost 300 million dollars that he tried to sell that airport to unsuspecting, um, you know, uh, foreigners. Um, he also claimed that he was maybe CBN governor or, or, or um, a GMD of NMPC. I don't remember what it was. Um, but he also had his own, you know, ways of, of convincing his um, victims that he was these, uh, you know, this person, you know, that he, he you know, had these um, positions. You know, it's not very difficult to take pictures in, in offices and claim that you are this or you are that. Mm -hmm. You know, but my, my only concern really is I hope, you know, that um, um, there is some, I mean, if he's found guilty of some of all these crimes, that at least it sheds some, there is some justice, you know, for Pelimi Unifade. But at the same time, um, Never mind. Anyway. <laughs> I'm just um, thinking that, you know, that, that's so much, you know, to process right now. Yeah, it's a lot. But um, it's a lot. 
we, we just pray that the justice actually will be meted and of course the law will Absolutely. be cut up when he made his found. And the charges should not just end at you know defrauding victims. He was also caught with weapons and so those charges need to be amended. I hope that the charges are up to 50 of them um, and he stays away for a long time if found guilty. Those are our top trending stories. Uh, stay with us. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we of course will be looking through the major newspapers across Nigeria this morning. Stay with us.